Good afternoon, my name is Seema Rahman and this is my colleague Ellie Barton and we're both physios uh, here, here at the Christie. So we're going to start off with an icebreaker activity where we're going to need your participation. For the purpose of this um, we aren't going to be passing the microphone around. Um, I'll start off, so I uh, live in Stockport uh, so I haven't had to travel far. For me activity means lifting my mood. However, because I spend half the week in London, I find um, access to exercise a barrier. I'll now pass you over to Ellie. So I've travelled in from Auchenham, but I actually recently moved up to Manchester. So activity for me meant a chance to meet people and help me to be social and feel part of the community. A barrier for me was definitely cost and it played a big part in which gym that I chose to join. So today we want to speak to you about the benefits of exercise, give you some recommendations on how it can be tailored to you specifically and have a bit of a discussion and give you some tips about the barriers to exercise and how we can help you to overcome these hopefully and then go through a bit of a patient case study so we can relate it to um, a more of a real life situation which will hopefully be helpful. We're going to start with um, a bit of an introductory video from Macmillan. We'll hear from a Manchester councillor. Yeah, and you. <laughs> no way. A little exercise is good for all of us, particularly if you've had cancer. It will reduce the side effects of treatment and can even help prevent some cancers returning. But you don't need to run a marathon. You got fig rolls? Oh, Joe. Hurry up, because I'm starving. Just a short jog or brisk walk to the corner shop can help. So just to touch on that a little further, uh, the benefits of exercise, as was mentioned in the video, it can actually help to prevent disease and recurrence and can help us to live longer. It can reduce fatigue and strengthen your muscles, joints and bones, which is unfortunately one of the side effects of cancer treatment. It can improve your mood and quality of life and can reduce anxiety and depression. It can be a chance of social interaction and, and to meet people. And there's evidence to show that it can actually help people in their return to work as well. The Macmillan website is a really good resource. It's got lots of information about the benefits of exercise, examples and some information around the research on this if you want to look into it further. The recommendations of exercise if you look at these two boxes, the one on the left is the ideal and the one on the right is more of a real life situation on how we can help to apply this. So around 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week or 75 minutes high intensity a week, a little bit of both aiming to do two or three strengthening sessions a week which includes some balance and stretching and just talking about in your daily activities trying to elevate your heart rate. So in an everyday situation that translates to things like a brisk or uphill walk for 30 minutes five times a week. It can also be things like gardening or doing your daily household tasks like your hoovering and your dusting and making the bed. Activity games such as the Wii Fit, the PlayStation Dance, but there's lots of things now, lots of apps, free apps that you can download with different levels of exercise that you can do at home. Some people like to go running or cycling. Family activities, these are good ones, more of examples of the balance and stretching components, so like bowling and ice skating or swimming. But you can be doing things like Pilates and Tai Chi, whichever suits you. And in terms of just generally elevating your heart rate, in life, trying to find suitable alternatives, so things like climbing the stairs instead of taking the lift, 
getting off the bus a stop early and walking a little bit further, parking a bit further away from your friend's house or to an appointment, making those small changes can really help. The barriers of exercise, we've tried to categorise here. So the first one we can touch on is fear. So this might be for some people, if you've had an injury and you don't want to make things worse, feeling embarrassed about being unfit and potentially feeling um, in a group situation that you don't want to participate because you think everyone else might be better than you or judging you. Having scars, so also feeling intimidated about your own appearance, be it weight management too, maybe you're overweight, maybe you're underweight. In terms of trying to overcome these barriers, what I would say is actually once you do get into exercise, you will realise that actually it can be really self-directed and most people are really just focused on themselves. They're not there to, to judge other people. Or if you're finding things too intimidating, perhaps go with a buddy, even if they don't want to go with you long term. If you speak to somebody and just say you're needing a little bit of support to get going um, and take somebody with you. And I think most of the time, once you get going, that intimidation initially settles down. Feeling clueless, so not knowing where to start, having a lack of knowledge on what type of exercise or what level is safe or appropriate for you to do. And hopefully today we're going to cover some examples which will really help you to know where to start and what resources can be of use. Fatigue is huge, especially from cancer and cancer treatments. It's a real big barrier for some people. Evidence showed us that exercise can actually help to reduce fatigue. So it's not, exercise won't necessarily make that fatigue worse. And it's about learning to alter your exercise and tailor it to the days where you are more tired or the days where you're feeling like you've got more energy. And hopefully we can help give you some examples of what to do on what days and also again the Macmillan resources are really helpful. Time is sometimes an issue especially if you are trying to get to appointments, finding time for your family and friends and if you're getting back to work as well and that's why if we can recommend anything it's to find something you enjoy because we're better at making time for things that we like doing and also, just to try and find something that fits in with your life so that it's not something extra that you have to do. You know, there's standing exercise programs that you can do at work or your friends or at home. There's chair exercises that you can do even just sitting watching the telly. There are ways to get exercise into your life without it having to take up loads of extra time. So, going back to the clueless part of things, there are lots of apps and schemes that are available now to help people get back into exercise um, or to start an exercise if it's not something that you've necessarily been interested in before. There's things like the Couch to 5K program, which is a graded nine-week exercise program if you like running. Um, there's lots of free apps, so there's a seven-minute workout app, uh, which is really short sessions, which is much easier to fit into your day. There are, again, this is highlighted the Macmillan resources that are available, which have exercise diaries and examples of um, how to grade your activity and what is good examples of things to do. There's park runs, which is really good as part of feeling part of your local community. And park runs aren't park runs. Some people walk, some people are in wheelchairs. It's a real range of abilities. And importantly, there's something called a physical activity referral scheme. You can see here that the one in Manchester is called Buzz. There's one in Stockport, for example, called Paris. But wherever you live, there will be a referral scheme through your GP where you can have a reduced rate at a local council gym and have support to help you with a tailored exercise programme. So I'm going to now go through a case study with you 
we're going to talk about a patient called Bob who had uh, two young children. Uh, before his cancer diagnosis, he uh, had a very active family life. He enjoyed cycling with his, um, with, um, they enjoyed cycling together. He went swimming with his children and went surfing during school holidays. He was also a keen runner and golfer. So um, one day he was out with his children on his bike and he fell off. Um, after he fell off, he started to feel um, pain and discomfort on his flank and his side uh, for about two weeks and that just wasn't going. So he went to his GP and subsequently he had some scans done and was diagnosed with sarcoma. And for those who you don't, don't know what sarcoma is, it's a cancer of the soft tissue, connective tissue and bone. So Bob underwent a course of uh, radiotherapy uh, to shrink the tumour, followed by extensive abdominal surgery. Bob found his treatment um, quite difficult. Um, he found uh, radiotherapy quite debilitating and um, struggled with fatigue. He also found functional restrictions uh, following the surgery quite hard and felt often felt like a burden to his family. However, despite this, Bob was focused on his recovery so that he could um, return to some normality. So <clears throat> I'm now going to go through uh, Bob's timeline to achieve two of his own go goals. Um, so he had a short term goal, which was to be able to return back to golf and a longer term was to return to work. So the first six weeks uh, post-operatively, Bob had physio input whilst he was an inpatient um, and that focused predominantly on functional activities like getting transferring out of bed, um, starting to walk, managing stairs and then achieving washing and dressing. Um, initially Bob struggled with pain and discomfort, however this was managed by uh, pain relief um, and he was managed to walk about 50 to 100 metres on the ward. Um, on discharge, he was given abdominal exercises based on Pilates to carry out at home from six weeks onwards. Um, and we, were give, we gave him um, advice about how to progress his walking over the next few weeks. And he was uh, managed to walk between about 500 metres and a kilometre. So uh, approximately about 10 weeks, um, Bob went to his local golf course and started um, with small, very small activities of putting and chipping. And then at 12 weeks, Bob achieved his um, short-term goal of returning um, to playing golf. So he was playing four to six um, holes of golf a few times a week and then gradually progressed this to playing full, full round of golf uh, two to four times a week. At three months, um, Bob was able to return to work on reduced hours. Um, <clears throat> with, in conjunction with his occupational health um, team at work, he was able to reduce his hours and then slowly over, the, over weeks um, increase that. And now he's working back at full time. So as you can see from this timeline, um, it was a very slow process for Bob. Now, everyone's journey will be very different and some may take a longer time to achieve their own end goal. So for, for Bob getting to work and to the road, of, to, to road recovery wasn't easy, an easy process for him. Emotionally and physically, he was quite up and down. <clears throat> Initially after surgery, and as you would expect, Bob um, struggled with pain and numbness around the surgical site. However, after getting over the initial pain of the surgery, Bob, Bob started to physically feel well, but f frustrated. Um, he was frustrated by the restrictions placed on him by uh, the results of the surgery. So because he had quite a, a lot of abdominal muscle loss, um, this resulted in um, very uh, weak core strength. And so he was unable to do um, a number of things that he wanted to. He was also frustrated by fatigue. Um, he found just carrying out daily activities quite exhausting. So on some days he found that he wasn't able to do as much walking as he wanted to and he found that that was, um, he was taking a step back. But we had to explain that 
you know, our body is telling us to, to rest on certain days. So it's absolutely fine to day, have days where you don't feel like you can do much because on the days that you feel more energized, you'll naturally do more, more activity. So just to um, give you some top tips that we would um, want you to take home with you, please be kind to yourself. There'll be, there will be days where you don't want to do anything and that is absolutely fine. Don't expect too much too soon. Set small achievable goals. So you might have a, a large end goal, but in order to achieve that, set yourself little goals um, to that journey. Finding um, an activity that you enjoy. Not everyone enjoys going to the gym. It's important to find something that suits you, whether that's gardening, cycling, or group exercise classes. Some people like to work with a friend or a partner, as this helps keep them motivated. It, uh, it's a good idea to log your activity or set activity days, because this helps to give you um, a structure so it helps you plan where you can fit small bits of activity in during your day or week. Um, and also by logging what you're doing, you're able to um, track the progress um, of your activities and how far you've come. I'm going to hand you back over to Ellie. So just an example of how you can fit exercise in on those days where you are feeling very tired or you're busy, you haven't got time. Just... Um, Let's go through these chair-based exercises to show you that you really can raise your heart rate and help to do your stretches um, wherever and whenever, really. This, um, these kind of examples or exercises are available, um, again, through the Macmillan site, really. There's standing exercises, chair exercises, um, you name it, it's out there, but um, here's your chair exercises. So Ellie's going to start off with a seated march. So she's going to get herself to the edge of the chair and all she's going to be doing is just lifting and raising her knees. Okay? And you can do, give yourself um, a circuit of this, so uh, you know, a minute of each exercise, 30 seconds of each exercise, just depending on how you are. We're now going to move on to a seated star jumps. So again, just depending on your level of fitness, um, you can uh, coordinate it in terms of your timings. We're going to now move on to an arm-based exercise. Yeah. With forearm. Okay. And then um, the next exercise is bit of a stretching exercise um, so she's going to reach down towards her toes and this is um, helping just stretch the back of her thighs okay so again holding the stretch can be as little as 15 seconds or up to a minute depending on how you are and then the last exercise we're going to go through is the rotation okay so you're going to turn um, to, to look over your head, really make sure you're rotating your chest around so you're getting a nice stretch in the back um, of your thoracic and on the other side. Lovely. Okay. 